In this video, I'm not going to cover any new coding or any new features in our day-night cycle, but rather I'm going to walk through the scene setup with a focus on lighting and post-processing effects. If you're familiar with procedural skyboxes and Unity's post-processing stack, then you can likely skip this video. As you've seen in earlier videos, the skybox is reacting to the directional light and is rendering a sun object to correspond with our light. To set this up, we need to access our lighting menu, which can be found under the window menu. For this video, the top two settings are all we're going to work with. The first setting is the skybox, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. The second setting is the sun source. Here we need to drag and drop the sun directional light into the slot in order for the skybox to render our sun object. Pretty easy. In this series, we'll be using a Unity procedural skybox. While this isn't the best looking, it does add a lot of functionality very quickly and very easily. By default, Unity assigns a default skybox, which is a procedural skybox, and that's helpful, but we don't have direct access to it, so we need to create our own instance of a procedural skybox for later functionality. Since a procedural skybox is a material, I have created mine in a materials folder. If you need to create your own, you can do this by right-clicking in a folder in the project window and select Create. From there, choose Material. Name the newly created material appropriately. By default, the material is using the standard shader. To change this, click on the drop-down menu and go to Skybox and then Procedural. Once this is done, drag the Skybox material into the corresponding slot in the lighting menu. And that's it. Pretty easy. Many of my outdoor scenes have several different light sources, so using deferred rendering can help performance. However, if you're only going to use the sunlight, you may want to stick with forward rendering. To change the rendering path, go to the Edit menu, then down to Project Settings, and select Graphics. This will bring up our render settings. In each of the tiers, I have unclicked Use Defaults, and then the only change I've made is the rendering path and setting that to Deferred. You can also do this on a per camera basis by selecting the camera and in the camera component, changing the option in the rendering path. Next, we want to change the color space from gamma to linear. My understanding is that with Unity 2018, the color space on a new project is set to this by default. But if you're using an older version or a project started in an older version, you may need to make this change. Once again, go to the Edit menu and select Project Settings. From there, choose Player. Under the headings of Other Settings, you can see the Color Space option. Simply choose the Linear option. The last thing we need to look at is the Post-Processing Settings. If you've not used these before, you can search the Unity Asset Store for Post-Processing Stack. Currently, version 1 is live on the Asset Store. You can get version 2, but it's not feature complete yet. So for this video, and probably for most of the series, I'll be sticking with version 1 of the post-processing stack. If you don't have the asset, download and import it into your project. Once that's done, we can set up the post-processing effects on the main camera. As you can see, I already have a post-processing behavior attached to my camera. If I remove the component, you can see the effect on the scene. Adding the component back to the camera, there is no change in the scene because we have not assigned a post-processing profile. I already have one created, but if you need to create a new profile, you can do so by going to the Asset menu, choosing Create, and then Post-Processing Profile. With the asset created, drag and drop it into the slot of the post-processing behavior component on the main camera. To adjust the settings, you will need to click on the profile itself. This will open the settings in the inspector. Most of the settings I'm using came from another very good video, which I'll link to in the video description below. So I want to go through the post-processing profile and look at the settings that I have. Rather than read them all off to you, maybe I'll just describe what each setting does roughly, and this will be a good chance if you want to copy the settings, you can just pause the video and copy them into your own project. So the first setting is fog. Hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I do not have the fog settings set up quite yet. We'll do that in a later video when we set up our fog module. Anti-aliasing, this gets rid of our sharp edges. Uh, it gets rid of some of the pixelation in our image. Ambient inclusion adds some shadow to where two faces meet and makes corners a little bit darker than they would normally. Generally, this makes our scene look much, much better. Screen space reflection, I haven't added this as I'm not using any reflection. 
depth of field, this is a great thing to add in some scenes and can blur out uh, the background or the foreground and kind of add some focus to what you want the player to look at. In this case, I've chosen not to use it. Motion blur does what it says. If an object's moving, it'll blur it a little bit. For this scene, I'm not using it as I don't need it. Eye adaptation mimics your eye's ability to adapt to high or low light environments. Bloom will take colors and make them brighter. It can cause kind of a blurring effect. It'll kind of blur a light colored object into its surroundings. Color grading is a way to adjust the tone or the feel of your scene. For me, the most important setting here is the tone mapper. I've chosen the filmic or ACES setting. The user LUT is essentially photoshopping for your scene. What it does is it takes a particular color and swaps it out for another color. And it does this according to the lookup texture or the LUT. LUTs can dramatically change the feel or tone of your scene. I'd encourage you to look at the Unity Asset Store as there's several packs of LUTs that can be downloaded or purchased for a very small price. Chromatic aberration is a setting that I've chosen not to use and can distort your, your scene in the way that a regular physical lens would do so. Grain adds a little bit of distortion to your scene, a little bit of graininess, and this is really useful for breaking up the color banding that can often happen in a low poly scene. I've got my intensity set pretty low, but it still can help us break up those color bands. The vignette adds darkening to the corners of our scene. I've got mine set pretty low, but I like the effect that it has. The last setting here is dithering, and this is another way of dealing with color banding. But since I've used the grain, I don't really need to use dithering, and the grain's a little bit cheaper to get a similar effect. So there you go, maybe not super exciting, but those are the settings that I'm using throughout the series. I wanted to share those so you could follow along and get similar results to what I have. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If something can be improved or you have a question, eh, then don't be shy. Leave a comment below. Lastly, make sure to check out my Patreon page and Discord server. In the next video, we'll be looking at creating the modular framework to be able to extend and modify our day-night cycle. This will allow you, the game developer, to customize and add your own features. Thanks for joining. Hope it was helpful and see you next time.